Hey y'all, welcome to the Charles Norman Show. <clears throat> this is my last show from this particular room, y'all, because this is my last day of school. You guys will probably see this episode tomorrow, which is okay. Today we're just going to talk about, we got sports and we got hot topics. We're going to talk about the Eagles schedule. I'm going to give my prediction. We're going to talk about Tim Tebow. For hot topics, we're going to talk about the Jenners, um, Waka Flocka, Bobby Christina News, and we have some a little bit of stuff about Hillary Clinton, of course. All right, so it's time to start the show. Here we go. Last night, the NFL schedule was released, and I can't say that I'm upset about it. I love the Eagles schedule. I mean, I think the schedule makers did us a great favor this year, and I'll get it. I'll tell you all why I'm saying that in a minute, because we opened up the season week one against Atlanta on Monday Night Football. Which is a little weird because then we only have a couple of days. We got to come straight home. Then we got a couple of days and we play Dallas at home. And then we play the Jets week three. The Redskins week four. Um, the Saints week five. And that's a home game. The Cowboys and the Saints are home games. And the Giants week six on Monday night. Another Monday nighter. The Eagles are in a lot of primetime games this year, which is great. Then another primetime game the week next week. Week seven against the Panthers out in... Um, it's an away game in Carolina, which will be a good game. Then we're at the Cowboys. No, actually, this is why I love the schedule. Because week 8, we have a bye. A uh, bye, thank God. And then week 9, we go to the Cowboys. Another. <laughs> That's three straight primetime games. Hot damn. The Eagles must be something special. I guess they want to see Tebow um, on primetime football TV, I guess. Then we go to the Cowboys on November 8th in week 9 for Sunday Night Football, which will be a goodie, hopefully. Hopefully we come out, first of all, before I go any further, if we come out and lose that game, the show after that game, you guys are going to just don't even watch it because I'm going to be pissed. I'm going to be able to control myself because we should not lose another game coming off a of bye because we had extra preparation. The Cowboys are playing the Seahawks the week before that. So we should definitely take it. Take advantage of that game. And I hope I hope Chip Kelly does his best and takes advantage of that game. Talk about Chip Kelly in a minute, too. Then we go home to play the Dolphins. Then next week in week 11, then we play the Buccaneers. Week 12, we go to Detroit. And then week 13, Super Bowl 39 matchup. One of 19 Super Bowl rematches that will happen this season all across the NFL. They're like, since it's the 50th anniversary of the Super Bowl, they're having gold games. And the gold games are the Super Bowl rematches. And we're featured in one against the Patriots to defend the Super Bowl champions. They beat us 10 years ago. Or 11 years ago. Super Bowl 39. And then week 14, LaShawn McCoy comes to Philly. And I hope everybody boos him because he is an idiot who has said nothing but bad things about the Eagles since he was released. And then week 15, we stay home against the Cardinals. Week 16, another primetime game versus the Redskins. Then we finish off the season in the Meadowlands again. Oh, it's not even called the Meadowlands, is it? In MetLife Stadium. The Giants Stadium used to be called the Meadowlands. All right. I'm loving it. I'm loving that schedule. I think the schedule maker did us justice. We got the division games early. I am going to, um, what's it called, predict the season. Initial, because it's not real. I mean, we don't even know how this team is going to be all season long. We don't even know what they're going to be like in game one. We don't know who the team is going to be yet. Chip Kelly hasn't told me why, and that's part of the reason why I have not done a show. One show this whole offseason about the Eagles, because I don't know what the hell they're doing. Um, Sean McCoy, I did know that it was Sean McCoy was going to leave. I've said that. I've been saying it for months. Other than that, I don't know what the hell Chip Kelly doing. Chip Kelly is doing what Chip Kelly want to do, and I'm going to let him. I'm backing out. Whatever the hell he want to do, he can do it. Just as long as he has my team ready. Come September 14th, Monday night, when we're in Atlanta, we better win. I mean, we better... Yeah. Get a straight chip, because we need to be winning like that come time, come when the season starts. I want to be winning like that, back to back to back. We got to be a well oiled machine. This is year three. No more excuses. You got full power. This is your team. We'll see what you do in the draft, and I'll do a show after that, and I'll see what you do when you cut the final roster, and then we'll be back in business for the regular show. This is our live show once again in this room, so see this is different setup because um, we had to put the room back together. The Eagles are signed Tim Tebow. And then this fool just said, God is an Eagles fan. And I'll ask him, where? Since when? 
If a guy was an Eagles fan, don't you think they would have won the Super Bowl by now? Debo, don't come here talking crazy stuff. And really, people made a big deal about it, and everybody was texting me just like, I didn't even tell y'all that. I got like 102 text messages when my show McCoy was traded. Don't text or call me anymore. Call Chip Kelly. Send him a letter. I'm tired of talking to y'all about his job. I can't do it. No more. No more. I won't do it. So, Tebow is an eagle. He deserves another chance. I'm not sure he even make the roster. We got four quarterbacks, four running backs. I guess we're going to go four centers, four quarterbacks, and three running backs. That's how often we're going to go. No passing. As he's clearly not putting any time into the wide receiver position. If he thinks that Riley Cooper... A Jer- what's his name? A Jared Tutu and Jordan Matthews and Josh Huff are the ones that's going to get this team over. And he's crazy. I mean, somebody take the crack pipe away from him now because it's just not going to work. Um, I'm just going to move on to my initial predictions of the season. So, you know, Atlanta came off a bad season last year. They got a brand new coach, too. Who's their coach? Dan Quinn, the Seahawks defensive coordinator. I'm going to give us a win, so it's going to start us off at 1 0. Dallas coming to us. I'm going to give us another win. It's going to start us off at 2 0. Then we go to the Jets. Give us another win, 3 0. <laughs> this is sounding crazy. Week 4 at the Redskins, 4 0. Week 5, 5 0. Week 6 at the Giants, 6 0. 7. 7-0, we could possibly go into the buy 7-0. Now, will they go into the buy 7-0? Probably not. I mean, they may be 4-3, and 5-2. Hell, they may even be 3-4. and four. We don't even know what the hell Chip Kelly's doing. That bye week, just for the sake of me and the sake of everybody, I just hope that they win week 9 at the Cowboys. So, we'll get them 8-0. Week 10 is Dolphins. 10-0, possibly week 11 at the Buccaneers. 11-0. No, 10 and 0. Yeah, I'm sorry. Week 9, week 10, the Dolphins is 9 and 0. Week 12, at the Lions, I'm going to say that is 9, 10 and 1, 10 and 2 versus the Patriots, 10 and 3 versus the Bills, 10 and 4 versus the Cardinals. And I'm going to say versus the Redskins, week 16, 11 and 4. And week 17, I think they're going to lose to the Giants, and we're going to be 11 and 5. Well, that happened. That's initial. That's crazy. We're starting them off at 7-0, and then they lose so many games at the end. Probably not for the next nine. I mean, five of the next nine. Probably not. It won't probably happen. But I'm just that's my initial prediction. I'll have another one after the third preseason game. How about that when I'm back up here at school? Um, moving on to the hot stuff. Um, Bruce Jenner is becoming a woman. You all knew that already. I've told you that already. But his wife, well, his ex-wife, and I guess we can we have to call. Now we have to, but it will be respectful if he wishes for us to call him her. So she, his, her ex-wife, Chris Jenner said, <laughs> and it sounds crazy. She just made herself sound stupid. Bruce never. That's my Chris Jenner voice. Bruce never talked about me. Talked to me why about him wanting to be a woman. He did tell me that he did have a tendency to dress like a woman, but he never said he wanted to be a woman. I'm sorry, but unless you like doing movies and plays, or you're like Medea or Martin or Big Mama and I don't know, other people, if you're just dressing like a woman um, by yourself at home, then that should have been a sign of her. Maybe she just didn't want. She wanted to deny it. Or uh, Bruce says he, she made him live a lie. I mean, Chris made him live a, her live him live a lie. That, that whole marriage and it was, I don't know, bad for him. But now he's doing an interview with Diane Sawyer on Friday on ABC. It's an exclusive. You guys should watch it because I am. All right, moving on to their daughter, Kylie Jenner. Kylie Jenner. See how big my lips are, regular. Kylie Jenner's lips are like this. Hmm. Well, about two years ago, that's how big her lips are. So now her lips. Hmm. Are like that big. 
and they have a new challenge. I'm not actually going to do the challenge. I'm just going to show you all what they do. They have a new challenge out called the Kylie Jenner Challenge. And it's like, people like putting their lips in there and like a container like this. And a container like this. And it's like sucks their lip out and it has their lip. Like you can't feel your lips afterwards. I've never done it. But the people say, oh, I can't feel my lips. And it's like, they think it's funny as doing it. My only advice to these people, stop being stupid. That is the stupid. You are taking the blood away from your lips and swelling them up. It's no like circulation. I mean, no circulation in your lips. You're gonna kill yourself. I mean, or you might lose your lips. Who knows? You doing it for too long. You pass out or something. I don't know. It's, it doesn't even seem like something smart to do. Mm -mm. Why is that everybody wanna have big lips now? At one time, uh oh, here we go. At one time, wasn't having black people having big lips something that, I guess, white people used to pick on and now they want to have big lips? I, I just don't get it. Like, it's, I know we're supposed to be working towards ending racism, but why was it any discrimination against that before if now they want to do it? I don't get it completely. All right, moving on. Waka Flock of Flame. A pothead is running for uh, has announced that he's running for president of the United States. And I have two things to say. He said he's going to, the main two things are he's going to legalize marijuana and he doesn't want to wear suits to the um, meetings because dumb S words are irritating. And I want to tell you all, all you idiots who think he's going to run for president, all you people who think you're going to vote for him, shut up because you can't, because he can't run for president because you got to be 35 years old in the USA to do it and he's only 28 years old. So, Waka Flocka, you may go smoke your weed by yourself. I mean, you can smoke your weed with your friends or whoever you want to smoke your weed with, but you're not going to be smoking weed in the White House. Get out of here. Come back in seven years. Bobby Christina, y'all know Bobby Christina Saga. Um, she fell in the bathtub like her mom was a couple years ago, but she fell in the bathtub. They thought she was dead, but she wasn't. Well, I don't think they ever thought she was dead. She was just unresponsive in the bathtub. She's been in a coma for about three months. Bobby Brown announced that she is now out of a coma, and she's doing a lot better. But the, the Houston side of her family, like her Aunt Pat, who's just... The, shut up, Pat. Who's just like... I don't know what I want to say about Pat, but she's a weirdo. She... <laughs> She said that was a lie, but Bobby was never wake wake um uh, Bobby never woke up. But she does have irreversible brain damage. And the grandma said Whitney Houston's mom said Bobby Christina is awake, but she has that irreversible brain damage and then Bobby Brown said no conditions have been like enough has given out been given out on his daughter by a doctor. So he doesn't know what they're talking about. And he met with doctors on Monday to talk about her conditions. He didn't tell nobody. But I'm pretty sure Grandma's right when she says she got irreversible brain damage. I mean, she been in a coma for three months. She took a long nap. I mean, she messed up in the head. I hope she'll be okay. And I hope that irreversible brain damage turns reversible somehow, some way. It would be great. But I doubt it'll happen. Well, I shouldn't have said that. But I did. Oh, well. I mean, let's just be realistic here. If you got irreversible brain damage, irreversible means it ain't going to be reversed for me. You messed up. They don't know the quality of her life. Bobby Brown said the doctor said she's going to live a long life. And she's going to be to Oh, snap, y'all. It's snowing outside. It. This is crazy. It is in the middle of April and it is snowing outside. Good thing I'm about to leave in about two hours, y'all. Because this is crazy. And I don't mean to be standing up. Like this, and so y'all can just see the eagle sign on there. Um, fly, eagle, fly. It's snowing outside. I can't believe it, but back to Bobby Chris. I just hope she'll be okay, but if she doesn't, she'll be okay on the other side. We'll keep praying for her. Oh, we never did a video. I just not even in the show. But um, De Devon Still, the football player from the Bengals, his daughter is cancer free. Leah, remember I showed y'all the videos like that was a long time ago. His daughter was on Ellen, and Ellen like gave a ten thousand dollar check to childhood cancer. The Leah Strong thing, she is cancer free, and she's doing a lot better, and that's a good thing. All right, so we're gonna end the show up with that Hillary Clinton stuff. She got some critics, and I think this is sexist. Because, and it's all the Republicans too, of course. They're criticizing her. That's all they're talking about. They better find something else to talk about. Because if they talk about Benghazi and her age 
and the emails all now they're going to use up everything they're not going to have no more ammo against her and then she's going to win an election that's not what they want but her hormones are a problem apparently they want to think somebody said ask the question will her hormones make her think irrational well let me see we have 44 male presidents did their testosterone think, make them think irrationally I think it did all the wars that we don't went to but ain't nobody have a problem with that did they no I don't think so I, I know I didn't have a problem with it. So why we got a problem with her hormones making her think irrationally? President's been thinking irrationally since the beginning. Now because a woman want to run, you almost say it's her hormones that's making her think irrationally? I think not. Then her age, which she'll be 69 on election day. Oh, mm, that's one thing the Republicans are making big. The Republican God, your guys is, y'all's God, Ronald Reagan, who didn't, I want to be nice. He was older than her when he got elected as president. And by the time his thing was over, he didn't even know. I mean, his brain was so messed up. I mean, I'm pretty sure he had Alzheimer's probably throughout part of his presidency. Like, it was starting. So, what do you guys mean she's too old? He wasn't too old, so why can't she get a chance? I mean, what's the deal here? Seriously, like, we got to be fair. All right, y'all, that's the show for today. I hope you all enjoyed it. It was fun for me. I just can't believe it's snowing outside right now. That's weird. It's April. I don't even know what today is. It is April 22nd. I'm coming home, y'all. Next show, we're going to be in Philly. Probably outside somewhere because I know it's warm in Philly. Um, Yeah, it was such a nice year. The sophomore year is over. I'm officially a junior after 6.30 tonight when I finish my martial arts final. Um, my mom and my aunt and my cousin will be here by then. I'll be packed up. It's the last time we're going to be in this room. We'll have a better room next year, a bigger set. Things will be nice. New openings, new season. Everything will be great, but I will see you guys over the summer. Hope everybody who's taking finals this week does a great job. Remember, do your best. Forget the rest. Never settle for less than your best. And if your best isn't the best in the class, that doesn't mean it's not good enough because you are good enough. All right, see you later. Leave me just watch. Hey, 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 oh. Before we leave, 